Mercury may contain a miles thick layer of diamond? How are we just finding this out now? For being in our solar system's front yard, Mercury is still surprisingly mysterious to us. That's because being so near the sun has not only shaped Mercury's planetary fate, it also, quite frankly, makes it an absolute pain in the neck to study. Even though it's brighter than the brightest star in the sky, the sun's glare makes it challenging to observe directly. The J.J. Abrams lens flare of astronomy. Because it's so close to the sun, it's also difficult to send probes to. Its orbit is very zippy, so you've got to zoom your spacecraft to get to it, but you also have to fight the sun's gravitational pull, so just as the spacecraft gets in range of Mercury, it has to burn significant fuel to decelerate, lest, you know, it fall into the sun. Plus, Mercury doesn't really have much atmosphere. It's small, and solar winds blow away most of the gases that could comprise a planet's atmosphere, which doesn't give us much room for aerobraking, a technique that saves fuel by using the planet's atmosphere as a source of drag for deceleration. It takes more fuel to visit Mercury than to leave the solar system. All of which is to say, we haven't really explored Mercury all that much. Only two missions have ever made close observations of Mercury versus, like, dozens on Mars. Our first mercurial flyby was in 1974, and until then, we didn't even know for sure the planet had an atmosphere. Again, it really doesn't have much, easily the thinnest of any of the eight planets in our system. More recently, the MESSENGER mission made three flybys and mapped the entirety of the planet's surface. Messenger. Mercury. NASA. You love your backronyms and mythology jokes. So, while astronomers wait for next year's Mercury flyby from the Bepi Colombo mission, they are still feasting on the data from Messenger's four years studying Mercury, and those are the data that underlie this Diamonds on Mercury paper from Nature Communications. Messenger found that Mercury's surface had unusually high levels of graphite, a less sparkly form of crystalline carbon. Unlike diamond, graphite is made of stacked layers of basically two-dimensional-ish honeycomb-shaped graphene, and it's the most stable form of carbon under standard conditions of temperature and pressure. The idea is that graphite is present on the surface because it was less dense then Mercury's early magma ocean, so prior to magma ocean crystallization, the graphite on Mercury's surface floated like ice on water, which is why we saw it on the crust. To these researchers, this suggests Mercury is really quite high in carbon, and even though carbon products that made it to the surface may have, some of them at least, been lost to space, the surprisingly high presence of graphite and its presence in lower crustal layers suggest that Mercury is likely carbon-rich beneath the surface, too. The question isn't really whether there's enough carbon for this miles and miles of diamonds idea. The question is whether conditions on Mercury allowed that carbon to convert to diamond. Here on Earth, diamonds form deep in Earth's mantle about 150 to 200 kilometers beneath the surface, usually below continental plates in particular. The only reason we see diamonds at depths we can realistically dig to is that they are occasionally carried up closer to the surface by volcanic eruptions, aka when a planet's inside thoughts become its outside thoughts, and the thoughts are lava. But even on Earth, those conditions are not universally present, and the thought has been that on Mercury, the temperature and pressure conditions didn't really allow for diamond formation. So... As Mercury's magma ocean crystallized, sure, there may have been carbon in it, but models suggest that carbon would be graphite, not diamond. This paper's novel finding didn't come from new data from Mercury. All these Mercury researchers are effectively working off those same observations from Mariner 10 and from Messenger. What's changed is how we've interpreted the data. Mercury's gravity and spin, for instance, offer hints into the nature of its inner core, which astronomers now believe to be solid. 
when studying the composition and dynamics of a planet's interior, it's less dig until you get the answer and more modeling, 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 thermodynamic models, geophysical models. I mean, even here on Earth, we make a lot of assumptions about what we can't see in our planet's core based on the things that we can. And as our assumptions change, so do our models with cascading implications. And in this case, our researchers paired that modeling with high pressure and temperature experiments to approximate the conditions of Mercury's interior over its formation, showing that if we're right about the internal composition of Mercury and the presence of sulfur in its core, then it's entirely possible that conditions could have allowed for a layer of diamond. While these astronomers think there's an outside possibility, the one depicted on the left, that the diamond layer formed early in Mercury's history as the magma ocean crystallized, they think the picture on the right is more likely, that as Mercury's inner core solidified, the temperatures involved caused diamond to separate and float up above the molten outer core, creating this miles-thick layer of diamond that has captured our attention. But if all this sounds highly speculative, guesses on guesses on guesses, you're not wrong. Typically, for model-driven findings like these, we try to validate our hypotheses by examining and testing the implications. If there is a diamond layer, what else would we expect to see? What data might prove us wrong? These astronomers hope is that with our third mission to observe Mercury, seriously, I can't believe it's only our third, Bepi Colombo might get the data to really test our assumptions. This isn't actually the first paper to suggest that Mercury is diamond-rich. Previous studies have hypothesized that Mercury's surface may also be diamond-studded, but that's by a completely distinct mechanism, namely impacts that smack into the graphite on Mercury's surface, creating the pressure-temperature conditions to smoosh that graphite into diamond. This more recent study agrees that impact is the most likely explanation for any diamond found on Mercury's surface, but this is the first model to suggest there may also be diamond down below, not from impact, but as part of its formation. So, are we going to go to Mercury and mine tons of diamond and be rich? Absolutely the heck not. We can make diamonds in a lab, and that is infinitely easier than mining a planet that requires so much Delta V budget to land on that we've literally never even landed there. But the mineral composition and history of Mercury's planetary formation are not wholly unique, and the things we're learning from Mercury may well apply to exoplanets far beyond our own system as well. Learning about Mercury helps us learn far, far beyond our system. It may be a sparklier universe than we thought. <laughs>